What's up, Laker fans? The Lakers blew out the Warriors on Christmas. Let's take a closer look at how it went down. But first, please download the Vivid Seats app and get 10% off your first order for tickets to a Laker game, concert, or show. The Lakers had Kyle Kuzma and Klay Thompson for most of the game, and Kuz did a nice job of trailing him and chasing him off at the three-point line. The Lakers bigs showed higher on screens in this game than they usually do. The idea is to sandwich the shooter with pressure coming from behind and a big contesting in front. Zubats does a nice job of jumping out on Klay after he got a bit of separation from Josh Hart here. It was a similar strategy against Steph, although it was usually on pick and rolls with him instead. Lonzo fights over the top of the screen while Zubat shows high, but retreats as soon as Steph starts attacking. The danger is that Steph will get all the way to the basket if the big shows too high, but that only happened twice in this game. Zoo is great at helping and then recovering like this throughout the game. KCP was matched up with Steph when Lonzo wasn't and was great in ball denial. KCP usually defends him pretty well. I love this play. Steph pushes off on KCP, but Rondo reads the play and jumps in front of Steph on the switch to shut down the passing lane. The Lakers supplemented this aggressiveness on the perimeter by protecting the paint with LeBron roaming off of his man, usually Draymond Green. LeBron even left Draymond alone in the paint here and forces the turnover on the hard double. Draymond so badly wanted to avoid shooting these that he was passing them up even when he was wide open. The Lakers used the same strategy with Jonas Jarebko and Alfonso McKinney. This allowed the Lakers to double Kevin Durant in the post, limiting him to just 13 shots. LeBron was more aggressive in early offense than he normally is, which makes sense considering how Golden State switches. A lot of the screening action in the plays that the Lakers run is negated by the switches, so it's best to just set one screen to get the matchup that you want on LeBron and have him attack early.
I'm gonna have a Zubats video out in the next day or two where I'll go more in depth, but he was great at taking advantage of the size mismatches after switches, both in the post and on the offensive boards. Kyle Kuzma tried to take over once LeBron got hurt and forced several shots. This helped Golden State go on a big third quarter run, which they often do. They scored 14 points in just five possessions to cut the Lakers' lead down to two. Most of it was just great shot making, but they also took advantage of that sloppy Lakers offense. But the Lakers were able to stem the tide at the end of the third, capped off by a huge three by Lance Stevenson, who scored 11 points in the 11 minutes that he played. Then Rajon Rondo dominated the close of this game, repeatedly attacking the basket with aggression. The size of his hands allow him to control the ball without gathering it, which then allows him to finish around defenders at a variety of different angles. That aggressiveness created opportunities for others as well. Golden State folded after the Lakers hit back, missing several wide open shots and having unforced turnovers. It was an impressive, resilient effort by the Lakers after losing LeBron and revealed some of the potential cracks in Golden State's foundation. Laker Film Room is dedicated to helping you enjoy the Lakers on a deeper level. If you'd like to support the work that we do, please click either the Venmo or Patreon links below. Alright, that'll do it for this one. I'll catch you guys next time.